Swimming is probably the most daunting element of triathlon training. There's a lot more technique and different things to consider and it's not as easy as just heading straight out the front door. You've got to get to a pool and you've got to work on technique. When you race, there's that hustle and bustle as well, which is really off-putting. But we're going to give you some great techniques today that are going to help you improve not only your swimming in the pool, but also swimming open water. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you like this video and you want to see plenty more. We've got action from our live races and all the behind the scenes access from our favorite pro athletes. Okay, Tim, you're the expert. What is it about drills that we need to know and why exactly do we need to do them? The thing with swimming is it's not just how strong, how fit, how fast you are, it's how efficient you are. Technique is everything for swimming. You could be an Olympic champion runner, yet you can't swim 100 meters without being crazy out of breath. So we're gonna work on things that are gonna make you more efficient and therefore more comfortable, more relaxed, and then that will help you swim quicker. Some of these drills are really specific to open water, which is after all where we race. I think a key thing that I would really like to work on is getting out of the water, feeling a lot more fresh for the bike and the run leg. I might not get heaps faster, but if I can get off feeling fitter and fresher, more efficient, like you said, then I know I'd really benefit from that. Absolutely. Swimming gets us to the bike, bike gets us to the run, run gets us to the finishing line. It's all about efficiency. You're not going to swim minutes quicker in the swim, but if you can get out fresher, more relaxed, your transition will be smoother, then you'll have more energy for the bike. You've got so many matches we can burn in a triathlon. We want to burn as little as possible in the swim, so efficiency is everything. And drills are the, the key to that, they really are. Let's look at the top five then. This drill is called finger drag, and it's great for doing two things working on a high elbow and then not crossing the center line. I'm gonna break it down, first of all, looking at the high elbow. So when we swim, the recovery phase, which is when your hand is out of the water, going over your head, we want a nice high elbow. To really exaggerate that when we swim, the drill is you just drag your fingers along the top of the water until they go in, and then you do the, 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 both arms. The second part of this drill really works on rotation. If we have a center line, if you can imagine a pole down the middle, we don't want to cross like that because as we enter the water like that, you can see my right hip goes out and then my left hip and that's like a crocodile, which is so inefficient. So it's very hard to see where your hand enters. So as we finger drag, it stops us from crossing this center line. So we need to finger drag, and in there. This drill is really going to help efficiency. Again, doing this drill, I'd recommend using fins if you have them, because then you don't have to focus about floating body position. You really have to focus. You would break this down into six to eight times 25 meters, where you do half a length of the drill, half a length freestyle. And then once you've had a rest, really think about that and then add it into 100 meters freestyle. So with this drill, it's all about rotation. If you can imagine a pole through your body and you're rotating round it like this, it's a bit like a rotisserie chicken, just perfectly going round. We need that rotation. That's the focus of this drill, is we're gonna do three strokes. So it's a one stroke, two stroke, and then as we come in, we rest our ear on our shoulder, keep nice and we're on our side, and it's six kicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we go in, one, two, three, and then we kick. This has really got the rotation, and it's really hard to do, so it might take you a few goes to get it right, but once you feel that feeling, that energy, the, the, the stroke length lengthens, your distance per stroke improves, and it's making you an efficient swimmer. Again, you want to do six times 25 meters, doing half a length of the drill, but you need to always put it into freestyle because that's what we're doing. And afterwards, put it into 100 meters. So 
So with all the drills we've talked about so far, they've been about rotation and the front of our stroke. One of the biggest parts of the stroke that I think people neglect is the finish, is the hand exit of the water. So this stroke is all about that. So we know we're gonna have a nice high elbow, we're going in, we've got our rotation, as we've got our catch and pull. As you come out, people often just come out short. So this drill, I call it brushing of the thigh, you can call it touching your trunks, it's got many names, it's entirely up to you. But basically, when, as your hand exits the water, I really want it to brush the thigh and flick. So it's really got to do that. So when you're getting the water, you're catching, you're pull, you've got the high elbow underwater, you're pulling through, you're coming by, and instead of just kind of coming out there, it's keeping it nice and straight and coming out there, and then again, back to the high elbow. So when your hand is in the underwater phase, you are really moving that body. You're going in, your hand doesn't actually move, it stays still and you move, but we want to get the most bang for our buck there. So this drill, again, I would recommend six to eight times 25 meters, putting it into full stroke. This drill is probably one of the most neglected areas of the stroke that we need to improve on. But to really get the full power of the stroke, we need to work from top to bottom. And as triathletes, we want to be as efficient as possible. When we get out that water, we need to be fresh and have swam fast so we've got more energy for the bike and for the run. Okay, so we're triathletes after all, and at some point we're going to have to do some open water swimming, which means we need to perfect our sighting. It can be quite chaotic when you first get into a race. There's people bashing and crashing around, and you're not quite sure which direction you're going, or quite frankly, what's going on. So this drill is perfect for that, and we can do it from the comfort of a pool without people around us. We call this the water polo or sighting drill, and it's exactly what it says on the tin. We're essentially practicing looking exactly where we're going. It's nice and simple to do. We're essentially swimming in a straight line, but looking up for about eight to 10 strokes at a time before putting our head back under. So we are just coming up our chest above the water, taking a look, but really concentrate on looking where you're going. So I like to pick something at the end of the pool to look for, whether it be the clock or the lifeguard or something like that. For this drill, it's quite a good idea to use a pull buoy to stop the legs from sinking so you can really focus on the sighting and not have to worry about what the bottom half of the body is doing. We can start by doing the eight to 10 strokes before going back under and then perhaps mix it up a bit with every five strokes looking up and sighting before going back down for the swim. As well as getting to where we're going faster, this drill is also perfect for making sure we can get out of a chaotic situation when there's a lot of swimmers around us. We might just need to take a slightly wider berth and it's good to know exactly where we're going and being able to see that. It's common when it comes to swimming to just leisurely follow the feet in front of you and not have any idea where exactly you're going. That's great until you get to a race and the person in front of you is going slightly further out than they need to. It's great to feel confident going into a race and your own ability to sight. The swim is the first part of the triathlon, so you want to make sure you leave it feeling comfortable that you didn't add any extra distance on, you were able to escape the hustle and bustle if you needed to, and you just had a great swim. The next drill we're going to look at is the clenched fist drill. This is what we're going to work on to essentially perfect our catch. It is super simple, but a lot harder than you might think. We're just gonna clench our fist, do our normal stroke and pull back. You'll quickly realize that you're not getting much bang for your buck for your stroke there. This will feel very strange and you'll definitely want to open up your hand and use that catch again. But it might show you that you've perhaps not been using it to the best that you could. When I do this drill, I like to start with my clenched fist and then bring it up to what I call the bear claw before just bring it to my normal stroke. That way you really get the different sensation and have how it feels throughout the stages. I like to do one length using the drill, with the clenched fist, and then one length swimming back normal. You can also start to implement what I call the bear claw, so not quite the full clenched fist. And then you really start to feel the different sensations as you are extending the hand back to the normal stroke. So one length, full fist, maybe bring it up to a bear claw to try, and then one length swimming normally. And just alternate backwards and forwards, different lengths, um, until you've perfected that drill. 
So you've seen our five favorite swim drills. Now remember, don't turn up to the pool and do all five. You want to pick two beforehand and execute them as best as you can. And remember, don't always do your favorite ones. You've got to work on your weaknesses. And know exactly which ones you're gonna turn up to do that day. That's it. This is all about preparation and trying to swim consistently. If you work on the small things, you don't have to be out of breath. You don't have to have a high heart rate to improve your stroke, to improve your overall time. These drills will really help you have a much better race. So make sure you let us know in the comments how you got on if you enjoyed them. And we will see you in the next video.